We've been rescuing cats for almost 30 years. Once I started adopting, it kind of became an obsession. Then it just kind of snowballed. We currently have 22 cats, which sounds insane and wasn't planned. This is Smudge. And so there's poppy seed, cheesecake, chocolate, secret, donut, vanilla, smoky, um, mini bean, mikan, climber. I'm forgetting a whole bunch. I can't remember anymore. Hi, Blackbird. If you're a cat person, to me, the moment that the cat trusts you, because cats are usually wary, I just find that aspect of it to be amazing. I like to adopt cats that are hard to place. You know, we take black cats because of superstition are hard to place. And I like to take shy cats because most people don't want them. All cats are different. Some cats want to be social, some want to be their own space. And we started building catwalks about 25 years ago. The house is filled with walks, it's filled with fountains, uh, both for the sound and because the cats drink from them. The reward is we have this zen-like experience for us and the cats. 22 cats, they're 22 different sentient beings. My first experience with FIP was four years ago. Uh, we had adopted two kittens and one of them, Peanut, uh, was diagnosed with FIP and I had never heard of it. And it's this horrible disease that usually attacks kittens and older cats. Peanut lasted five days from diagnosis to the time we had the euthanizer. I was told it was really rare and I thought, I've been doing this for 25 years, it's the first time I saw it, I'll never see it again. We adopted two more kittens, Vanilla and Miss Bean and Miss Bean was diagnosed with FIP. But through the magic of the internet and the fame of my cats, I was put in touch with UC Davis. They were starting a drug trial and uh, Miss Bean was accepted. And ultimately, she didn't make it, but they learned a great deal from studying her. I found Smokey, another FIP kitten. It was a little scary knowing what I had just gone through that I was probably gonna go through that again. But Smokey, unlike Miss Bean, did respond, one of the rare ones that did. He went through 12 weeks of twice daily painful shots, that was the protocol, and he would never run away. He's now completely recovered, and he is uh, now one of the very few cats who survived FIP. He's a pretty special cat. The researchers who have been studying this, they've been studying it for 50 years. And only this year is the first time they were actually able to cure a cat. And so that inspired us to raise money for the researchers to uh, speed this drug. My main business is construction. I have a construction company, which is how I could build all these catwalks. We never stop building catwalks. Uh, we build them as money and time allows, and we've never built one that they don't use. And we try to uh, invent new, new things. For years, people have asked me, can you do this in my house? And we're selling the catwalks in kit form. And the idea is that uh, for a, a very reasonable price, you'll get a catwalk complete. It will be able to install by a basic carpentry skills. And they'll be like ours, they'll be floating. And the proceeds of that will be going towards Zen by Cat, which goes toward FIP research. I belong to a lot of social media sites that th these groups for FIP, both private and open groups. And every day the story is the same. You see new members joining and saying, you know, I, I adopted a kitten for me or my kid and, and it got a cold and, I, and suddenly I'm told I have to euthanize it. And it's so horrific. You're so helpless. You're, you're told there's nothing you can do. These people are heartbroken and they want to do something. And we're trying to give them a constructive way to do something. That's my great hope for this.